Well, it has been some time since the last time I had a rant about a game thing, so I guess it's time again. Um, <laughs> I think the last time, actually, if I remember right, the last time I had a problem was with the Project Callisto or Protocol Callisto, that's what it's called. <clears throat> and in that game, there was a problem with the final boss, but uh, I don't know. That the day doesn't seem that big of a deal, but back then I was just thinking, well, that needed coverage. Um, so here's the problem I had with uh, Resident Evil 4, the remake. Uh, there is a couple of things that were sort of not imported, but an idea from the third remake and the second game remake. Um, here's something that I feel like is just stapled into the game to just make you really, really angry, right? So let me start by saying I played this on the easiest difficulty, which is, I think it's called assisted. I'm not sure. I think so. Um. I played on a computer, but with a controller, because, I don't know why, just felt like it, and I don't think it makes that much of a difference if you are playing really easy, uh, on a really easy difficulty. If you play with controller, I jump, I'm kind of more uh, adjusted to it, plus I feel like this game definitely was created for a controller and not a for, for a keyboard, it just feels like that. Uh, either way, that's how I play the game. Uh, I play it the same way uh, Protocol Callisto, and there's a good reason for it. There's two very good reasons for why I play single player games on the easiest difficulties. One is that I really want to see the cutscenes and, um, you know, the story. Just I don't want to struggle through levels. I understand when people play like hardcore or the hardest possible modes. I understand why. I get it. I used to be that way too and you know today if I had the time and if I cared I would do it with some games too I but that's the thing I just don't have the time or I don't care or both so this game like many many other games I usually play on the easiest difficulty uh, so one reason is that I just don't care the other one is that um, when you play a game especially a game like this on the easiest difficulty and you see what what happens like in the combat with the NPCs, what happens to you as a player throughout some levels. Uh, you still experience the... how you call it? Just you, you still see the problems. You just don't get stuck on them, if that makes any sense. I will explain this. Uh, there are levels in uh, I remember them in Resident Evil 2 remake and this one I don't I don't remember it in the third one very likely it was there and I just don't remember it but I remember uh, in the second one and this fourth one I remember that there are uh, levels where you are basically in position you are in a level that you have you know, you, you have some kind of enemy in front of you that is not chasing you the same way like the Mr. X chases you. Not It's not like a chasing big guy after you that is walking, but it's more of a like, it's just n nowhere to be found and then all of a sudden jumps out of a wall or something. And it can be killed, you have to use the map, you have to use the environment to slow it down because you have to always get something done in order to get out of the level to progress and this thing is sort of supposed to prevent it from happening right but you know obviously when we play on easiest mode it's not gonna be difficult to do which is the reason I do it uh, so in this game this level that I refer to is a level I don't remember the chapter but I do remember how it looked like I remember what what is happening in that level and it will likely be on the screen right now uh, in this level, you uh, are inside some kind of facility, uh, and the thing that is chasing you is this, you know, taller, 
thing and it just jumps out of like I said out of walls out of holes in the walls and uh, it prevents you from going through a certain parts of the map so you have to just trick it there is a way of to freeze it too and uh, one thing that I just didn't like when I played this level but I never liked levels like this in any video games especially in horror games because I feel like in horror games the difficulty is uh, inflated even more so that you are afraid to die because it's easier to die and I think that horror games have bad like habit of exploiting this feeling in vi in games in general that's another reason why I play most games, most horror games, or most every horror game on the easiest difficulty because I don't care for, uh, you know, that kind of feeling. Like, I understand why some people like it, but I don't. So, I went through this level relatively easily because obviously. Uh, but the thing is, I remember in this level, uh, and this is throughout the game, but I feel like if you play hardcore and you play this level, you are gonna hate your life for like two hours straight. And I just don't understand. Well, I, I understand why it's made that way. It's just like it's a bit silly. It's it's a bit it's a bit uh, you know just it's self hate almost. Uh, so the thing, the problem is that uh, there are a lot of things clashing at once. Uh, this is not the case uh, when you are playing the level I'm mentioning with just one enemy that is kind of chasing you. This is more happening with multiple enemies, multiple NPCs in other levels. But this level had it similar. So basically, you, you can't uh, sprint, not in the same way you imagine but in other games. In this game specifically, in Resident Evil 4, you can't sprint. You can walk or you can like walk f not you can technically it's sprinting or running but uh this the amount of speed you get ch changes a lot if you're stationary and you press sprint you are not exactly sprinting it's i think they are going for like the fluid vibe where your movement is more based on how you actually are moving as as a person and less on the input of you know your input uh, which is fine, but the thing that, you know, contradicts this is that when you have an enemy like this, that jump scares you basically out of nowhere, and you get to evade, sometimes you get to evade the attacks, but uh, when it jumps on you, uh, and it damages you, and sometimes it damages you without you even seeing it on the screen, which is another chapter of its own. But uh, one thing is that if it jumps you and it damages you, uh, your character, you know, has to go through a very long animation. And this animation just pisses me off. As a player that's played on the easiest difficulty and barely died like twice maybe in the entire game because yeah, I'm playing on the easy, it's really hard to die, uh, I was still pissed off like a lot on this game so here's uh how it looks like for a player like me who is you know going the easy route you get damaged by something you don't see because third you know third person cameras for some reason have to be a thing i don't know why we changed it because when we you know when we had the resident evil what six seven eight i'm not sure just there was the one Resident Evil in the first person and the other that was Village. Those two Resident Evil games are my favorite Resident Evil games. I don't know why do we have to keep going back to the third person camera. It's just that Capcom doesn't handle it well. Very few companies do third person games well with camera. One of them would be Naughty Dog. But uh, Capcom doesn't do it well. They don't do it poorly. They, it's fine, but it's sometimes it shows how shit it is and this game definitely shows how shit they are at it sometimes anyway uh when you're in third person camera you don't see some of the like attacks right sometimes you don't see the enemy at all but sometimes you do know the enemy is there but because you're on a controller you don't get to control the camera as fast as you 
would like, which means that sometimes the enemy just attacks you without you even realizing that the attack animation is happening. So this happens, right? And you get you get knocked down, you get you get damaged. So Leon now has to go through this fucking animation. They're lying on the ground. Now there's there's two things about this that's just wrong in every way, just looking at it is just painful. One is that you can't do anything while that animation is happening. You are super vulnerable vul vulnerable vulnerable vulnerable. You know what I mean. <laughs> I can't say the word right now for some reason, but that's what you are. Uh, you can be easily killed. I imagine if you played on the hardest difficulty, this will be probably where you die. Uh, anyway, when that animation happens, uh, you first of all can't move, so you are very easy to kill, and the fucking enemy that did that to you is literally standing in front of you. Like I'm, I'm saying like, you could feel their breath on your neck that's how close they are and they don't attack you after this for some reason the game says hey you don't attack them for a while and I only assume that this is because I played on the easy mode I think if I played on the hard one or hardest or just medium I guess uh, the enemy just starts attacking you again and I don't know how that looks, because, well, when you get attacked the first time, you go through this fucking retarded animation. I assume that there is a way to break out of the animation eventually, but it's possible the animation just plays over and over again, and you just are locked out of the game until the, the retarded animation plays. Insanely bad design. Just, just bafflingly bad design. And I think it's designed to fucking make you quit the game. I think it's designed for you to get annoyed on, on at the game really hard. Anyway, in this level, there is just so many things that happen, to me at least, on that level, that are just like hilarious, because I just imagined over and over, uh, if I played, you know, on any harder difficulty than I was playing, if I had... You know, if I didn't have enough ammo, if I didn't have enough health, you know, or healing, uh, all these things. I imagine people who are like, let's say you are a streamer or just, you know, on YouTube, it doesn't matter. Just a regular person, maybe. But like, you're playing on the hardest difficulty, right? And you go through levels like this, and I'm just like, holy fuck, how long would I be on this level if I played on a hard difficulty? Because you get soft locked by animations so much in this game so much it's just i don't i don't even know so that was one thing that i just noticed was almost funny because like i said to me like it didn't matter all that much i you know i didn't die to anybody like that because my health was really good and uh you know all the all the attacks did almost no damage to me because i'm playing on easy but just thinking of the people who have to put up with this fucking thing and of all things if you accidentally get hit by something because you know there is like uh people can shoot things at you it's not just melee like a lot of the npcs can shoot at you as well so if you get hit by something like that there is animation too it's i think it's shorter than you know bosses or whatever but uh still it's just like stop fucking giving me animations in games like this because yeah if i ever if i ever wanted if i was like you know halfway through the game i was like i like this game because i do kind of like the game i i, I enjoyed playing it but i was thinking like <laughs> if i wanted to play this game on the hardest difficulty again right or game plus or something like that uh i wouldn't this is definitely this is definitely a, a deal breaker to me uh, simply because I know there is very easy spot line between just like accomplishing, you know, finishing a game on the hardest difficulty, being the ultimate gamer, and between just doing the same level for four hours because you have to do everything. Not only you have to do everything perfectly, which I can even see that, like... I would try that, but if you get unlucky with an NPC that hits you, you know, out of nowhere, 
and you get soft lock into an animation and then another NPC comes around and hits you because you are in a fucking animation you are stationary target right now that's where they shine that they hit you and you are in a fucking animation again and this repeats until death probably like that is just not fucking easy to forgive like that's bad design doesn't matter what difficulty you are on um, yeah so that was like one thing I, I uh, just you know i i've seen that in the game uh, and i was like oh this is something i could talk about this is just this is this is so interesting because i remember playing i played recently uh the both of the re remakes resident evil 2 and 3 and i remember that in these games but in those games the soft locked un like the animations that soft lock you they weren't that bad or maybe i just didn't see it but it didn't feel this bad because I think if you play this game and you get once, just once, you get soft lock with animation, you are fucking done. And that means that you are basically one shot to some enemies because if those enemies hit you, you get soft locked, then you're dead. And yeah, that's just like I don't I don't know why like we keep doing that shit because animations don't need to play every fucking time. There are this place for it. And it's not games that track your, you know, track your, uh, the way you play as much as Resident Evil does. So, um, fucking weird, fucking really weird to me. Uh, it wasn't easy to, uh, just, you know, skim over that. I have definitely noticed it throughout the game a lot. So that will be it for the animation thing. Uh, I don't think I have much more to say. I probably, if I thought hard about it, I would have more to say, but I don't care that much. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to say that is just uh, nobody will watch this to learn this. So if you had learned what I'm about to say and it helped you, you are a lucky motherfucker <laughs> because there's no way you were watching this video for 17 minutes just to learn this so i wanted to put this tip in the game no uh, in the video uh just for that resident evil 4 comes with the denuvo or De denuvo i don't know how we pronounce that but it's basically a uh, anti-pirate system in place in the game and everybody hates that mainly because you can't play the game without the internet connection and obviously uh, uh, the way it works is that you constantly have to be proving the game servers or whatever steam i don't know that you indeed own the game and it keeps updating constantly so that's why you have to be connected to the internet when you play it uh, if you had this problem that i had which is that uh you start the game you skip the you know intro videos that are playing at the start and then you see just your cursor and nothing happens sometimes even for a minute sometimes for like 30 seconds uh the reason is probably that this down over thing then what i don't know uh it's trying to connect to the servers and that's why you can't do anything for that time so uh it's probably just your connection to the internet it doesn't have any other explanation to me usually when i start the game up it takes a few seconds sometimes it's instant and sometimes it takes a long time uh, so that's something uh this anti-pirate thing doesn't really affect me as a person but as you know as just a regular person who doesn't like you know that kind of measures i still don't like it but uh, you know if you had a problem like that in the game and you're looking for a solution or oh, why doesn't the game start up why is there just black screen because I've looked up the black screen thing and I have to say the internet has disappointed me greatly this time around usually when I google something like that uh, I get an answer but this time nobody knew and I'm pretty sure it's this thing because I still no explanation I really have I think it just takes time for the game to connect to something and once it's connected it's like oh approved he owns the game let him in so sometimes that takes time so give it a minute assuming you own the game now we are approaching 20 minutes which is my sweet spot as usual for these cape uh, for these videos 
so uh, one more thing before I go um, the local not localization the just there is a thing I told you I play uh, on a controller but I am playing on PC I have a PS5 controller I don't have an Xbox controller in the game this is one thing about the game that like is amazing to me not only you can play the game uh, with a controller of any kind instantly there's no need for anything really for you just connect the controller whatever controller you have and it will work that's one thing and i've seen games do it uh, god of war uh, on pc actually has the same thing and it's great sometimes when you can play the you can literally play this game uh, with keyboard and mouse and literally take the controller uh, you know and, and, and like you don't have to do nothing and that's great that's like so cool when the games are made like that I love that uh, but there's one more thing is that this game actually lets you decide which layout you have uh, for the prompts for the pictures in the game uh, you can choose between you know Xbox uh, you know, just how, how you call them these Xbox controller icons like A B Y X I think right you can choose between that and the PS PlayStation PS5 whatever controller so uh, that was a thing I could just go into the options and change and that's huge because a lot of games due to localization they're like or it's not like I know it's not called localization but it's basically when you have controller on a PC so when you when somebody makes a game port for a PC and it's originally made for consoles sometimes the games play flawlessly with controller as much as with the keyboard not very often but sometimes they are able to recognize which controller it had and uh, change the icons accordingly but I've never seen a game actually let you decide which icons you can you know which, which icons you can actually see so it doesn't really matter what controller you have connected so that was really cool so yeah that's all uh, of the positivity i have not that there's not, nothing more to say positive but i'm not reviewing the game there's a lot of positive to say i i really like the story i liked i like the graphics there's a lot of things to like about the game but this is a fucking rant and i rent it so there's that uh yeah i will see you some other time or not who cares right bye